Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play World of Tanks here, and uh, you know the time that I said I don't like the AMX 5100? Remember the other, you know, 600 times I said I don't like the AMX 5100? Well, I still don't like the AMX 5100, but apparently what I like and what I do good in are, you know, completely opposite ends of the spectrum, and it doesn't have any correlation to do with each other at all. So, with that being said, I really don't have too, too much to, you know, gab on about. No real stories to talk about. Yeah, like I said in my last episode, I could talk about my neighbors and how annoying they are, but that's never fun. Instead, I figured I would, uh, you know, talk about this, uh, this battle in the tank, because, well, you know what? I haven't done those in a while, just kind of like tips and tricks while I'm playing, or while I'm reviewing it. So anyway, in the, uh, in this battle here, in Mountain, this is Mountain Pass, which map is this? This is Lakeville, sorry. In Lakeville, top tier, with uh, Scorp and Farm Punk with me, we decided that we're going to do something a little interesting, and that was to kind of pursue a little path down the uh, the center line here. Not the center line, the, uh, the valley. It's a slower ter uh, terrain area, so you basically can get bogged down really easily, not to mention it's very defendable by the enemy as they can sit on different ridges, they can easily pull you into stuff. There's no real easy way to do much, as we see there that uh, Farm Punk took a nice chunk out of Scorp. It's all about, uh, you gotta really keep the momentum going. The moment that you stop moving is where you uh, basically stop winning. So, with that said, we had the initial idea of pushing up over the ridge with everybody, but we kinda got hungered down when our T-30 got stopped and we ran into a bunch of the big stuff. We had thought this plan was going to work because previously, like three matches before this when we were running the 5100s, <laughs> he ended up going over this rise, having a KV-3 basically sacrifice himself by sitting right where I'm aiming right now and uh, absorbing a bunch of shells while I ran around behind everything and slaughtered the living daylights out of it with the AMX. So we were trying to replicate that, but sadly it didn't work that time, this time at all. But I actually am able to uh, get around here this time. We were able to clear one side of it, so I figured I'm going to go ahead and kind of alleviate some support that the KV-5 needs, because it's getting railed back and forth. Plus, if I could take out the JT-88, that's really a major threat. The Super Pershing, yeah, he's big and nasty and all, but I should be able to take care of him. So, prioritizing my targets there, the faster firing guy first with the higher pin, so that way they'll start bouncing off the other two tanks. And then there we go. We are able to run around the backs of them, no problem. But I also noticed we're getting overrun. So, I kind of cleared out this side, where I'm at right now. Figured that, you know what, it is not essential that I continue on to cap. I'm fast enough, and I have enough rounds of ammunition, I can make it back to base, no problems. So, I tell, or I leave my uh, teammates to go on, go about their thing. I'm going to go back to base. I feel that, you know, a minute and a half, I have enough time. And if that grill can just get one little splash damage on that AMX, we'll be golden. So, provided that he can do that, we'll get reset, I can get on that, we'll do whatever we can. Oh, never mind, it was the Black Prince who, uh, this was maybe the battle I was thinking of. Yeah, the Black Prince said, well, no, never mind. There are two separate battles with the, kind of the similar result here. That Black Prince ended up, you know, acting as a distraction. He took a lot of hits, which worked out perfectly, I was able to get behind him. He did actually a perfect little battle there. They couldn't have, you know, had that one work better. He played that one perfect when he saw me. He knew that he was going to take a lot of armor and that I couldn't take any hits. So he could sit there all day. Whereas I would have to go back around and work my magic, blah, blah, blah. So it worked out perfectly. And now they're actually on the camp, but they're getting slaughtered because the enemy team actually came back. They saw exactly what we were doing. So they brought a bunch of people back, hoping that I wouldn't have gotten back here to take care of the AMX. But... Luckily, I make it back just in the nick of time, take out the AMX. Sadly, they take out our KV-5 and what's looking like they're going to take out our Black Prince here any moment now. They have a KV-3 way out there fighting off our T-34. I can only hope the 34 bests them, which in theory the 34 should if it gets right in his face. But I'm reluctant to go anywhere yet, A, because I'm on a reload, which a lot of my... Uh, choices here which is going to affect this battle is when to reload you know anytime I get a kill I'm gonna start halo reloading if everyone's familiar with that term which thankfully our t34 over there killed that uh, kv3 
Halo reloading is every time you get a kill, you reload. And that's kind of what I'm getting in the mindset of now, where there's less tanks, so I'm going to need to make sure I have a full magazine. The last thing I want to do is get caught, so I don't, I don't have support to be running around with, uh, you know, two and three rounds, but I also don't have the support to be running around with uh, anything else. I need to have a full magazine every time. So, we still end up having two tanks over there. I was not aware that we had a 34 over there. So I'm going to go ahead and charge up the center, try and support those guys. I know that they're hurting, by and large. That 34 is down to one hit left. But I know that we have some, they have artillery over there that we need to take care of. They have that heavy that's driving out in the open. And our, uh, our 34 actually gets derped by the, the artillery. So... I want to take out this AMX the best I can since he's on the run, he's in the open, and we also have a 34 out there. So sadly, get a hit for nothing. Try and sneak out another one if I can, but sadly that AMX just crushes the uh, 34, no problems whatsoever. So if I can still see him, I'll nail him, but I think I'm going to lose sight of him before anything else can happen. Take another shot where I thought he was going to be, and since I took a hit from that AMX, losing my radio man, it's time to retreat. We have lost everything except just me and the artillery. So, he says never give up. So I wonder if that's a, a reference to me. But, so, as I said, I'm in a downtime. Go ahead and reload. Not going to sit there with three rounds. I'm going to rather take the risk reloading than be caught with, you know, three rounds in the magazine. Only being able to hit, you know, two people and not being able to do anything because of it. Because I can't kill anybody with three. I need the full mag. So... We're going to have to camp back at base and hope for the best. That's kind of what the game plan is. Just, um, yeah, basically sit in a bush and watch. That's all we can do is uh, hope for the best. So, sadly, go into defensive mode here. I back all the way up. They have the advantage. They have to come to us. I don't mind taking a draw. I do have 3,600 damage, so I'm quite content with that. Four kills is nothing to shy away from. Now we just have to play the waiting game and see where everything comes. They have an AM, they have that AMX who should be at about half. They have that Hellcat, which I have no idea his hit points. And then they have the two artillery pieces. So I'm very leery of where that Hellcat might come around through. And I'm also leery of where the artillery is going to be because I don't know where they're going to rein in in. Because they can easily position themselves over in the, you know, 9 and 0 column of A and B. And just range straight into our cap. So it's something we got to be very aware of is the fact that we're going to get pincered in real quick. So luckily I spot this uh, Hellcat right away. He actually ran out without any support by the looks of it. And not to mention he deflected right off my uh, turret. I'm going to hope that was my turret when I had my back exposed to him. I took that large risk there knowing that he was going to be able to pin me. And luckily numbers just worked out that I was able to bounce him. And of course I had that lucky little hit there at the end where he was starting to get back below that terrain. I took the shot anyway, took him out. Otherwise, I would have to turn around and go chase him down. So, killing him right then and there really helped a lot. And, of course, as I said, Halo reload. After I killed him, reload. No point in sitting out there and having to deal with uh, taking shots that I don't, you know, fighting something under strength. I'd rather be at full strength. And right now, uh, I'd say I'm about 10 seconds left on my reload. I can easily dodge or take a hit for 10 seconds. So I know something started capping, so I know something's near me. It's just the measure of where is it. I figure if something was in front of me, he would have uh, been in front of me by now. So knowing that that AMX is right there, I got to run. My artillery got instant gibbed, so I got to be careful and take out their or take out their guy without me getting hit by the artillery. My best option is to fire and move, fire and move, and try and get close to this guy. Luckily, I had damaged him enough earlier that I was able to take him out before he could take me out, and their artillery missed. That was the clutch thing that their artillery missed. It was all about fire, move closer, fire, move closer, never stop, because that artillery, if even one of them nicked me, I probably would be dead. So thankfully they missed all those times. Just the, uh, the fact that, you know, I got lucky, they kept missing, kept missing, and then I got lucky that all my shots penetrated did maximum damage on the AMX. And I was able to wind him down from earlier in the battle. If I didn't knock him down earlier in that battle, I would have been in some serious trouble. Because I couldn't have killed him right then and there. I probably, he would have hit me once more. I might have survived it. So it would have been close, but I would not have been comfortable with it. I got lucky with what I did. Of course, getting nailed by that AMX is not a good thing. Still reloading, still reloading. Finally reloaded. Having to fire on the move. Because the last thing I want to do is get hit again by a tank and get crushed. 
So luckily avoided both their shots there, knowing I can take my time. That one magically disappearing in front of me. So down to just one more tank. Go ahead and go for the reload again. I'm hoping that that SU-8 is nowhere to be found anywhere near me. Gonna go ahead and park myself behind this to, to uh, lose my spotting. Buy myself that little bit of time that I need. Just take my time, and then there we go. Now I can actually turn around and go somewhere. I know that uh, he might expect me to come through the town, so I'm actually going to plan around that while I have my reload. Just buy myself time, go back to my cap, because last thing I want to do is have him get on the cap while I'm sitting over there trying to go and find him or anything like that. And I don't want to get caught with my, uh, my magazine not loaded, because last thing I want to do is get derped with only 200 hit points. There's no way I could survive a derp. There's nothing at all. Even if it wasn't able to penetrate me, I would just sit there and take a uh, take a surface hit and I'd still be dead. Nothing I could do. And of course, Scorp uh, promoting me for my YouTube stuff. So at the moment, guarantee you right now, my heart was racing a mile a minute. I'm like, oh geez, oh geez, oh geez. Last thing I want to do is get caught here with anything. I need to spot him first and I need to gun him down before he can face me. I do have the do have the notion that he doesn't know where I'm at. He w last thing he would have thought was I'd be in the city. And the second thing, second thing I have is the fact that if he even moves a slight bit, that reticle of his is going to expand wildly. So I do have a good chance he'll miss me, but I don't want to get into any trouble when I do. So last thing I know is where he was reported last spotted. So I'm just going to go ahead and go for the cap because I know if I get to the cap before him, I can outcap him. Best he'll do is draw, but we'll have to see where he appears. So I get on the cap to draw him out. Luckily, he appears over here. So, I don't know what he was thinking over in that end, but luckily he ended at base. So, rather than have him, you know, fire stuff over at me all day long, figured I can easily just come at him, deal with it that way. I know which way he's facing, so the last thing I want to do is give him a shot. I don't want to see if he can hit me either. So, he's coming around, thinking he can get to me, and nope, smoked him real quick. So, luckily finished him off, got 8 kills, 5,300 scene damage. We'll have to go take a look at those post-game stats and see how much I actually did and what achievements I got out of that one. Because that was an intense battle. Well, why don't you look at that? So coming off of a 10-kill uh, game a while ago with the AMX 5100, thinking I would never get anywhere near that again, lo and behold, I get an 8-kill game and I get the Raleigh Walters medal out of it and Top Gun and Defender. So quite a... Uh, little prosperous adventure there that was a great match and that would have been a uh, mastery had i not already got it when i got the 10 kill game before so again this is one of those where i say i cannot stand this tank i'm no getting it i don't like it i can't wait to get out of it and then lo and behold i've had two back to, well not back to back but two games in this tank that have outdone any of my other tanks this has easily become one of my best tanks and I don't even like it. I don't know how that works, but it does. So anyway, let's go ahead and look at the stats here. I ended up getting 62,000, well, 62,500 credits, 4,800 experience. So a huge amount of credits and experience there for an AMX 5100. Of course, the three medals I mentioned, the, Wal the Rally Walters medal there for eight tank kills. And of course, Top Gun for getting six. And then the nice little uh, defenders for knocking off that AMX that was sitting on the cap there, who actually bounced off me quite a few times. So, without further ado, we look at the uh, stuff on the side there, and we see that I hit and killed pretty much everything. The one thing I didn't kill was that T-34, at least that's shown. Everything else I took care of, by and large. So let's go ahead and look at the team score here, coming up. And we see that I did... 5,300 spotted our total damage as I had said before in the game that's exactly what I did when I spotted it I did not know if I I thought I hit that uh, AMX uh, 5100 back when he was uh, running away maybe I didn't maybe uh, I think I did say I hit 5,300 damage so I guess that does work out so yeah I guess maybe I didn't hit him in that blind shot which I thought I might have but I guess I just got lucky when he came back around and I was able to ace him that way because I did happen to have you know the more hit points where I hit him twice where he I wasn't even touched except for a minor bit of damage earlier any which way enough of that the three medals there we see ending up getting 1600 experience undoubled so not bad at all 
fantastic little match there. I did more damage than quite a, than almost my entire team added up. If you really look at that, there's what one, two, three, four people at a thousand damage. One person at two and a half, and then uh, what looks like what one, two, three, four people below that, and then quite a few people around zero damage. So. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn, but I got stupid lucky. Not only did I get stupid lucky, I just... Well, a lot of it came down to the fact they were filtering in one at a time. And that's something major that a lot of people do by mistake. You cannot filter in one at a time. An AMX 5100, yeah, I could have been reloading. Yeah, I could have had, you know, half a magazine left and not had the potential kill. But I was Halo reloading it and uh, just... They were pouring into me one at a time, and that made all the difference in the world was the fact that they were coming at me one at a time, and I was able to kill them left and right, no sweat, no problem. If they had all come at me at the same time, that would have been a whole different story. Then I would have been in trouble, probably wouldn't have been able to do anything. But filtering at me one at a time, I was able to do it. A little bit of skill there, a lot of luck. So anyway, we'll move on to the detailed report there, and we'll see exactly what happened. 27 shots fired, 23 hits, and of those, 21 actually did damage. So, as I already stated what my uh, values were for my damage rate, my uh, potential damage on the other hand, 2300, 8 hits sustained. Not too shabby, it's not a steel wall. I wouldn't have wanted to get hit anymore though, by no means. Even the little AMX that was bouncing off me left and right, I would not have wanted that to happen to me. So, ended up getting 80 defense points there, and as you saw, I made out with about... 20,000 credits after all is said and done. So, not a bad little battle there. Nice little 12 minute round. And we'll go ahead and we'll pop into another round here and take a look at that one. Alrighty, so now we're into an interesting map. I've really come to like uh, Encounter on this map. What map is it? It's uh, Provolovka. I really have become, you know, very fond of it. It's a really interesting uh, map. It's very, very, very fast. It feels like when you start capping, it actually moves a whole lot faster than any other cap I've ever been on, es especially being an encounter battle. Typically, um, it's much slower. Usually it's about four minutes a, t a person, and then that gets cut into half and then half again with every person on it. So, we, even with three people, it's like a two and a half minute cap-ish? No, probably not nearly that long at all. It just feels like this one actually goes very, very fast for some odd reason. And I don't know what it is, if it actually is a slower cap time or what. But I just find that this map, it's very fast. This I've never had a battle go slow at all in this map. It's always very quick, and if you're not on top of stuff, you're going to lose because of cap out because you're not there in time and it's it's rough it's not an easy map to win on because just the, uh, the angle of some of these hills that you can get on cap from and then not you know end up having to deal with stuff because you can sit below the rise and not have to take hits from people unless they come up and over and come at you instead it's a uh, it's it's an interesting map and provide makes you have to really think about strategy because without artillery, you really can't do anything. You need tanks on that hill that I'm, you know, kind of scoping out. Otherwise, you'll have stuff coming up this side of the hill, and you'll never know it. Got to have stuff on the island as well to deal with uh, people. There's just a whole lot of different random little bits here and there that really change up the way the game works. And it's, uh, I really like what they did with this map. I'm going to admit that I don't like assaults, but I think that encounters are a great map type. So, with that said, I'm scoping out one of the important parts of this area, which is, of course, that hill. I can understand, you know, people can come up and start capping if I'm not careful, but it's still early in the game. We got enough people. If worst came to worst, we can always stuff somebody on cap to hold it up for a little bit. I'm more worried about taking things off that hill, because last thing we want is them to start side-shotting and sniping us while we're trying to do anything else. Alright, so it is a two-minute cap for one person, so that actually is interesting, because typically it's about four, four and a half for a singular person, maybe three-ish. It might be because of the simple fact that people can sit on the opposite slopes of the hill. So, as I say that, still looking, we do have somebody up on the cap. Scorp moved up there to uh, slowly hold the cap, at least temporarily. I'm still looking for anybody to come across. They pulled off the cap, at least, or I believe that maybe they got hit, but... 
by and large it's mostly us just trying to wait by our time see if we can't spot anything here and take it out as we need to so now this guy's getting up into a much easier area to hit nail him take him down to just a singular hit left sadly couldn't finish him off there but maybe just maybe I'll get him right here because I have a line of sight fire up figure why not should have had him earlier you shouldn't have had that many hit points and you shouldn't have crushed our teammate but I can't believe he rammed and killed it 12t without taking any damage but you know what it happens nothing you can do so the uh, the rest of the tanks though it doesn't look like there's much on the hill except that 34 I'm gonna kind of again hold and buy my time wait a little bit see where things flesh out I'm still in more of a defensive mindset while my teammates are kind of calling out things in front of me so I'm gonna go ahead and slowly start working my way up here see if I can't start spotting some stuff like this uh, this Luva maybe I could hit his commander's hatch but no it didn't turn out that way so I'm gonna start slowly you know trying to take on one tank at a time I don't want to take on too much so launch it right into the commander's hatch take him out no problems and that actually opens up the uh, cap so now that we have Scorp on there no one else blocking it he's gonna start capping unless something decides to peg him or get on the cap like that Tiger 2 just did otherwise we don't have too much to worry about oh then there's a T44 coming to join the party so now we have some things to worry about they have some stuff on there and they did reset the cap not to mention that they ooh as you saw there were three people it gets down low 40 seconds to cap a minute with two and it still says three plus I don't think that's correct so Scorp gets taken out by that rapid fire uh, priest nothing we can do about that one and lo and behold this tiger just rolled out because I think he wanted the kill instead of really you know paying attention so he rolled out in the open like that and I was able to sneak it right into his low, uh, lower glacial plate and the only thing in front of us that I'm aware of is that uh, 34 and of course artillery and then everything else is to our flank by um, my estimates that I've spotted I don't know where the TDs are hiding don't know where some of the other things are but everything that's spotted is right along there so I'm gonna go ahead and assume that a lot of stuff is definitely dead ahead oh and there you have it there's the uh, SU-100 SU-100 is a glass cannon and a half while that thing hits like a ton of bricks it has no hit points to sustain anything so I mean no armor to take any hits so sadly he's able to get taken down no problems once he was spotted that was not a threat just have to worry about the Luva Gilly getting torn apart which he is currently sadly getting torn apart have the uh, JT-88 up here he's a huge threat because of that quick rate of fire and if he's throwing premium rounds he'll just tear me apart well he'll tear anybody apart really so have to deal with some of these tanks here the uh, the 32 with his insane front armor is a major threat so I'm actually trying to take him on especially since I have easy shots and he's gonna come up and over this rise on me nope no he's not okay so yeah he's still sitting there looking the wrong way which means I gotta get easy shots on him taking him out another major threat taken out of the game so again just stuff that you know simple little mistakes I don't know what he was turning to look at maybe it was gonna hit that TD on the ridge but we had this 59 behind us who is a nice juicy target if I could hit him which said I couldn't he was able to take out Gilly but now he's in our backfield we have nothing protecting back there so I'm gonna go ahead and snipe anything that tries to come up and over and it's just the 59 at the moment I kinda dodge artillery as they do it and hope that the 59 decides to come up and over instead of just poking back and forth back and forth so now we have an IS-3 as well up there but luckily the IS-3 is one shotable and the T-59 is two shotable they're of course shooting at my IS-3 and of course my TD so I go for the shot on that IS-3 and what do you know hit his tracks for zero damage so where I could have easily taken out something no such luck instead I do end up taking out the 59 because he pokes back up and over to uh, take a look at me <laughs> so the SU-5 is taunting us so IS-3 is sitting here potential to take him out if we play it right I don't think he's gonna take that risk to pop up and over he's probably gonna sit at that slant and just wait nothing I can really do until I get up and over but of course if I go in and take care of the base he's gonna go and take care of us um, he's gonna come up behind probably shoot all of us take me out so I gotta rely on the tiger over there resetting nice lucky bounce against that IS-3 to try and get an angle on him but my turret's lagging a bit there there we go finish him off now I can go take care of the stuff that's on cap 
Of course, there's probably a lot of stuff capping. I'm 44, 45, somewhere odd amount of seconds. Our Tiger II should hopefully be able to reset a few things. I got artillery splashing at me, but luckily no hits. Just have to get over to cap and reset it. Right now, it's a race against time if I can get there. And I'll tell you right now, my heart's racing. I know that, uh... Oh man, that was when I wish I knew the rap for Eminem. Uh, I don't know, I don't even begin to guess. Anyway, so if I can race here in time and reset the cap, everything will be golden. And it looks like I'll be able to do it because I'm right here in time. I can easily hop over and sit on the cap to uh, prevent cap points if need be. I just need to find a tank of theirs. There's their grill, obviously, but he's not a major important. That VK is a big one because he had a lot of points. So hit him, hopefully take him out in the next shot. Instead, there's the uh, T-34, which is actually a huge threat. I'd rather hit him. So, hit him, take him down, reset the cap completely. Now that VK is one-shottable, that uh, T-34 is not one-shottable, but you know what? He actually takes a hit from the Tiger too, which is nice. Finish off that VK. All that's left is this 34 to deal with. He's going to burn to death because of that Tiger II taking advantage of it. So, perfect work by the Tiger II. I just need to go and find me some artillery. So I'm taking hits left and right from this priest. Luckily, I don't think the priest can actually damage the VK hitting it from the front, maybe from the rear or the top, but hitting me on that front plate, I should be able to absorb all the rounds. So I'm actually going artillery hunting just because, I don't know, I wanted to, and that priest was, you know, aggravating me with all those shots. We got really lucky we were able to turn that one around. Let's see if I can find that priest. I know he's right about here somewhere. There he is, just hiding right in that back corner, knowing he was going to be there because of that uh, hit he had on me earlier. So I'm going to take another hit from him that I bounce, cruise one right into his crew compartment, and kill him off. Now to go hunt down the grill, just because why not? Might as well. We're going to win this one anyway. We have four minutes, we have a bunch of people, and it's a grill. I'm not too worried about him capping. If I can get people on the cap, that'd be nice, because I don't want to risk the opportunity of him coming in and you know, somehow miraculously killing all of us, but I'd rather uh, someone get on cap, but it doesn't look like that's an option. Everyone's kind of spread out. It'd be nice if that Tiger II got on cap, or even the uh, the Priest got on cap, but oh well. Gotta hunt down the grill. Try and instruct the Tiger II to go there. So I have no idea where this grill is. He ends up actually being way out there. There's no chance I'm gonna get to him, so I'm just gonna go and head to the cap. Maybe cut him off, maybe not. We'll see what happens. So, as I come up, he disappears away from us, which is sad, actually, that he was able to disappear. He's running for his life, because he has a pretty full-up IS-3, pretty full-up myself, pretty full-up Tiger II. So there's no way he can get us unless he one-shots all of us with some wizardry and black magic. But he's actually charging at that uh, priest, see if anybody can get to him, hoping that I can. But as I poke over the ridge, see if I can get a shot off on him. Looks like he's actually behind the rock I'm going to go for. IS-3 takes him out. No sweat, no problem. So there you have it. Another 8-kill game. So let's go ahead and take a look at those stats, shall we? If you guys couldn't tell, I couldn't wait to show you guys the videos for this one because I knew that I had uh, two 8-kill games I was sitting on. I was just waiting for the right time. I know E3 is kind of wrapping up. Actually, uh, quite a few cool announcements between the Xbox One and the PS3. Uh, World of Tanks coming out on Xbox, the World of Tanks, uh, uh, World of Warships stuff, just all that jazz, stuff that, uh, I'll probably cover all that in my next video once E3 is completely wrapped up. I'll go over some stuff about that. But anywho, as we see here, I got mastery on the VK4502, and I ended up wrapping up the VK. I am completely done with it. As you can see there, 65, or 165,000 is exactly what you need to complete that tank. So a great ending tank to finish on, or ending battle to finish this tank off on. A Walt, or Rally Walters medal there, as you can see, and a Top Gun and a Defender. So very, very similar to the previous tank, except I got mastery on this one because I didn't have it before. So what do you know, a mirror match, almost identical. It was perfect. Couldn't have structured this one any more perfectly. Ended up scoring 70,000 credits and a non-double 19,000 or 1900 experience so a very 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 good match there and of course hitting more people than I can possibly scroll through but I mean it's this tank easily became one of my favorite tanks I don't know why it just did 
I don't know why it became that way. I just really, I thought initially it was not going to be a good tank because of that. The armor rating on it was not very good. It was kind of like uh, easy to go through. But then once you learn how to play it and you really figure it out, you get the upgraded turret, the upgraded gun, you learn how to angle this thing properly. It is a beast. I cannot wait to play its bigger brother, the side scraping monster that is the VK4502 uh, off. Is it P or off B? Either which way, the next one up with the rear turret. Can't wait to start learning to side scrape properly with that thing. It's going to be fun. So, with that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the team score. And we see that, yeah, I topped off on damage there, of course, with 3,200, or 3,250-some-odd, 3, as far as I can see. So, right below me is that Tiger who uh, burned down that T-34. That was a clutch thing that he did there. So, that was absolutely perfect, getting on the hill like he did. And we just, we all had a good game. There was not too much uh, issue with this one. Everybody seemed to do pretty well. I really have nothing to say other than the fact that I I got lucky, I got the kills that I needed to, and I did. I went above and beyond and did absolutely excellent. I mean, again, I hate to toot my own horn, but I mean, sometimes sometimes the dice just land in your favor, and that's exactly what happened here, is everything just kept going the way I needed it to when, I, when our team needed it. And sometimes that's the name of the game, is this everything sometimes lands exactly how you need it. No problems happen, everything's a smooth game, everything's a smooth battle. That's exactly what happened. So, Gilly and Scorp doing their part, pulling a lot of weight there, Gilly especially. Scorp going on that cap to prevent it early. So, a lot of good work from our team entirely, nothing really to say beyond that. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, detailed report. And we see uh, four, 17 shots fired this one, 15 hit, 15 going through. So not a single one bounced, every single one did damage or, well penetrated might not have done damage but they still penetrated and with that said eight hits again eight hits 2900 damage by the looks of it yeah 2900 damage so a hundred more than i had in the amx so oh man this game is more and more looking to be very similar to the previous except this one i earned a lot more money 47,000 experience i mean credits quite a bit different there and uh, for the event, as you see there, I earned 20,000 credits, which is nice. That made the huge difference right there, was making that extra 20,000 thanks to a defender match. Anywho, uh, that's probably going to wrap it up. Not a lot else to talk about on this one, other than the fact I had two eight-kill games, and they were all relatively close to each other, just a couple days apart. So that was completely awesome. So anyway, guys, I hope you guys tune in again. In my next video, I'll probably talk about E3 and all the stuff coming out of there, my dilemmas from that. And, of course, I might touch upon something that recently happened in uh, World of Tanks that we're involved in and that we're helping out with and going on and on about that. But anyway, enough of my, uh, you know, talking. So I'll let you guys go, and I hope to see you guys in my next episode. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.